This is Lionel Johnson, Primarch of the Dark Angels and a current work in progress of mine. Uh, I posted a couple of pics of him on my Instagram and I got some very nice comments back about the cloak, which is amazing for me because robes and cloaks are something that I hate painting. I hate it so much, I never do a good job in my own eyes. Uh, and so I kind of came up with this method, which I used on this particular cloak. I got some great feedback, so this is basically the video of how to go about doing them. So our example model today is going to be this Black Templar Sword Brother. Uh, you can see, you know, I've done a bit of work on the armor already. I've blocked in the cloak itself. To basically make this work, you're going to need three different shades of the color you're working with. And a wash and a glaze. So just starting with corn red, I'm making sure to put another layer on. I've thinned down my corn red. I want to make sure that basically just the base layer is nice and solid. Just working to get good coverage and make sure that I don't get red on any of the armor that I've already painted. And that's all the corn red done. Now, the star of this technique is good old sponge on a stick. This thing I picked up from a hobby store near me for a couple of quid. You can get these very cheaply online. I would recommend getting multiple because you don't want to be washing this out time and time again whilst you're using it. You want to use this whilst it's dry because obviously when you press the sponge, it's going to release the water you've just washed it in all over your model. Not good. So I've got Evil Sun Scarlet here. I'm making sure to get good coverage on my sponge. I want all of the sponge covered. You don't want to have a big splodge of paint in the middle and then loads of surface area of the sponge not covered in paint or you're gonna get really bad results. So I'm making sure that my sponge is nicely covered and looking nice and red. From there, I'm just using my dry palette to basically, yeah, um, get as much not as much as possible, but get a good amount of the paint back off the sponge because we don't want this to apply too heavy. So we're going to start stippling now. I would recommend using, I've, I've used frog tape here, use masking tape or liquid mask or masking putty, whatever you've got, just to make sure that you don't uh, paint all over the work you've already done. If this is the first part of the mini that you're painting, obviously you're fine, you'll just be able to go over it afterwards. But what we're doing here is stippling with the sponge very gently to start with and slowly building up pressure. You don't want to overdo it straight away and knowing kind of how much pressure you want to apply to actually get the right amount onto the mini, very important. I'm mostly kind of stippling front on or slightly angled downwards to kind of emulate where the light would be hitting uh, and make sure I'm really getting the volumes as nicely as I can. You see, I kind of do this step for quite a while to the point that corn red is really only visible in the recesses. But as you'll see in a second, there is quite a nice gradient where we get Evil Sun Scarlet as our main color and corn red kind of just filling in in the spaces where the light wouldn't quite touch. So the next step is our wash. So I'm using Karaberg Crimson here. I just want to apply it to the entire thing. It's less to get the recesses because we already have our recesses. It's more to tie in the colors that we now have on the cloak and kind of blend them together a little bit. I want to avoid excessive pooling as much as possible. Uh, in these kind of little folds up at the top, I don't mind a bit of pooling. But the pooling at the bottom, I'm just going to take my brush and try and get rid of that because we don't want excessive pools. And after your wash has dried, this is where we're up to. I used a hairdryer to accelerate mine just because I'm only painting one mini for the video. But you can let yours dry in their own time if you're doing a full squad. Back to our hero of the video now, the sponge. 
like I said, if you've got multiple sponges, get a fresh one out. Uh, again, I used the hairdryer on this because uh, at the moment I only have one sponge. I will be getting more because I love this technique. Uh, so we're now on Wild Rider Red, our lightest red, and we're just going to do the exact same process as we did with Evil Sun Scarlet, but a little, a little less forcefully and uh, maybe for less time. This one, we don't want to cover up all of the nice work we did with Evil Sun Scarlet, but we do just want to catch those edges. So exactly the same process. Take it a little bit easier with this color and just make sure you get the kind of highlights and the edges. And uh, as you can see, I had a little mishap here, knocked him straight out of my uh, my model holder and got a big splodge right on the back of the cape, which is not what we want. But I left this in because I just wanted to kind of show that you can make mistakes like this. They are fixable. It's not going to ruin the process. And uh, what I did here was to basically go back to my corn red and just with a small dry brush, try and stipple some corn red just over. It kind of, it kind of obscures the paint splodge. It doesn't do a super good job, but it just brings it back down a little bit into the kind of general tones of the robes. And it's fine because we're moving on to our next step, which is the glaze and the glaze is going to make it all go away and look really nice. I use roughly one part contrast to five parts contrast medium. Because I haven't put my flesh tear as red in a dropper bottle yet, I'm just using my brush to kind of get a small amount. I've seen that it's not really enough. I want a bit more pigment in, so I've gone back for a, another little bit, just adding a little bit at a time. But this is going to be a glaze rather than going in full contrast. You really do want to dilute this or else you're just going to ruin all the work that you've already done and you're just going to end up with kind of a flesh tear as red cloak. So yeah, we're basically just taking that nice glaze and uh, sorry, the, the mini is off camera. It is surprisingly hard to keep a mini on camera when you're making these. Um, we're just going to take our glaze and cover the entire model. Once that's done, we've removed our frog tape and I'm just going back in with the glaze to kind of touch all of the bits that I missed because there was frog tape in the way. Just making sure it's fully covered. And that's the entire process. So here's our finished mini. As you can see, I've done the work in painting the rest of him up, but I really am very pleased with how quick that cloak was. It took me a good three, four hours to finish off the rest of the mini from start to finish, but it took me about 15, 20 minutes, um, not including drying time, to do that cloak. Here are a couple more examples of the exact same techniques being used. Uh, this was what I was originally going to make the video with, these, these bodies, but a couple of things went wrong. I didn't thin my contrast enough. I didn't make sure I had even coverage on my sponge. The sculpts themselves are a bit small and that had an effect as well. And I wasn't happy with the overall result. So I refilmed the entire thing with this Black Templar. And uh, I'm very pleased that I did because it shows off far better what this technique can do for you in such a short amount of time. Really hope you enjoyed the tutorial and uh, I'll catch you soon.